and welcome. Well, we are celebrating today. I am so excited to introduce you to my third cookbook baby in Mary's Kitchen. I am so, so excited about this new book. It was such a pleasure to write and to see it born into the world. What an absolute joy. And to celebrate launch day, I am gonna make one of my favorite recipes from the book. But it's not just me cooking today. I invited all of you to cook along with me. And we have nine super fans from all across the country representing. Hey everybody! <laughs> exciting. We have got viewers from the West Coast to the East Coast and everywhere in between. Speaking of which, I recognize Renelle. You're all the Hi, way in Mary. Oh my gosh, you're all the way in Edmonton. It's early for you, hey? Oh yeah, it is super duper early, but you know I'll wake up early to cook with you oh, and bake, I guess. Oh, 100%. And for those of <laughs> you who do not know, Renelle was on Cross Country Cake Off and he makes one heck of a delicious cake. So I am so excited to see how you do with this delicious savory recipe, Renal. Oh yes, last, this last year has been all about cooking yeah. and baking. Yeah. I don't know what's been happening, but it's so good. You know, it's actually really funny. Mm -hmm. I was actually at the grocery store and I saw your book. No! On like a stamp, so I took a selfie with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we can add it to like our other selfies we have. You bet. Oh my gosh, amazing, <laughs> Renal! I am so excited. Well, we are gonna make my Mediterranean salmon with feta pickle. And if feta pickle sounds confusing, don't worry, it's amazing. It's two of my favorite things together, feta and pickles. But the first thing we need to do is get started on the salmon. So is everybody ready to go? All right, yes, we've got this. So in a pan, I have got a 750 gram, or about pound and a half, hunk of salmon. Now, if you're making this for a smaller family or it's a little bit less celebratory or weeknight or something, you could totally do this with salmon fillets. That will work perfectly. So if you're cooking for like one or two, a salmon fillet or two will be perfect. But I'm going big because, again, we're celebrating. So in there, I want to do a really quick marinade. This is one of my favorite recipes from my book because it's super quick and easy and totally delish. So the first thing I need is half a cup of dry white wine because we're celebrating today. <laughs> now, whenever I'm using a wine to cook, I always go for a dry one, nice and kind of um, more acidic than something sweet. You don't want to go with a Chardonnay, something like a Pinot Grigio or something. And I use what I call a Tuesday wine. Does everybody have a Tuesday wine? Yes, excellent answer, everyone. Tuesday wine is the one usually with the screw top and you don't feel bad about opening it on a Tuesday, <laughs> you know? All right, now into there, I'm also gonna add in about a quarter cup of olive oil. Just drizzle that all over top. And this is actually a really punchy marinade. So as opposed to doing like a better amount of oil or a bigger amount of oil, I like that more wine because that's a bit acidic and it gets into that fish really, really quickly, which is a dream. Now into there for a little bit of lemon flavor, I'm gonna add in the zest of a lemon. Everybody knows how much I love my zester. If you don't have a zester, you could use a uh, cheese grater, that would work. You could also just use a vegetable peeler and peel off that lemon rind and then chop it up finely. That would work as well. Now, if you didn't want to use wine, if you're someone who maybe doesn't have a Tuesday wine, you only have Saturday wine and you don't wanna put it in this salmon, you could just use lemon juice instead. You're gonna use less than half a cup, but just the juice of one lemon will still give you that nice acidity which gets into that salmon absolutely beautifully. All right, everyone. Oh my gosh, I love, this screen of people zesting is truly my dream. <laughs> this right here is my dream come true. Who'd have thunk? 10 people zesting at the same time, what a joy. All right, I'm gonna set that lemon aside and then I've also got three cloves of garlic. And now I don't know about all you, but is your garlic huge this year? Oh, right? They're massive. They're like the size of golf balls. I don't know what's going on with garlic, but thank you to the ground. I love garlic. Now I'm just gonna smash this up and give it a little bit of a rough chop. I don't wanna finely mince up this garlic because I just want a little bit of that garlicky flavor getting into that salmon. Let's give that a rough chop up. And then just add that on into that salmon dish. Now I'm doing mine in a baking dish, but if you had like a pie plate, that would be great. You could even use a zip top bag. That would work really well as well. Now I'm gonna season that with some salt and pepper. Still with me, everybody? You're, oh my gosh, this is so fun. I love cooking with all these people. This is a joy. All right, I'm also adding in a little bit of pepper. And here, if you wanted to, you could add in some chili flakes. That would be really nice. Oh my gosh. You're all keeping up too. This is so nice. 
Also, we have an excellent flamingo shirt. Everybody's bringing their style today. Nailed it, yes sir. Perfect. Now into there, I'm also gonna add in some fresh herbs. So I've got a little bit of dill, some rosemary, and some oregano. Now, typically, I would chop these up, right? But what I'm gonna do is grab out a sprig or two of each. And these are kind of classic Mediterranean herbs. I love dill so much. Oregano is really nice and lemony and bright. And then that rosemary gives you like kind of a nice piney flavor. Now, instead of chopping these up, this is what we're gonna do. Just muck them up. Muck them up a little bit. And when you smell them, you get that perfume. All of those flavors come out. You can give them maybe a little bit of a break, but that's just gonna infuse into that salmon and look absolutely beautiful. Now, all I wanna do is give this a toss about. You know, classic fish, just flop it around. Give it a bit of a... Nailed it. <laughs> all right. Now, while I do this, I hear that Leanne has a bit of a question for me. Hi, Mary. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Now, I'm, so, yeah? I'm so excited to be able to do this with you. I'm so excited, too. Now, if people don't recognize Leanne, Leanne, you got a new haircut. <laughs> Leanne was on the show I, recently and looking absolutely amazing, celebrating your wedding anniversary. It's so good to see you again. <laughs> It's so good to see you too. And I love my new look and my hair is amazing. You Thank look you. fantastic. Oh my gosh. So what's your question, Leanne? I was wondering if I could marinate the salmon for longer than an hour. So with this recipe, I made it so it's a quick recipe. So it's a quickly marinating. So I do it for 15 minutes to an hour. The reason you actually want to stick to under an hour is because of the acidity. And salmon is really nice and kind of tender. So that marinade gets in there really, really quickly. So to be honest, no. That's the short answer of it. I'd stick to an hour, but if you did want to get ahead, there's two things you could do. You could marinate it for an hour, take it out, dry it off, and stick it in the fridge. Or you could actually just fully make this recipe in advance and keep it in the fridge cold and serve it cold. So cook it up, wow. serve it cold. It's super delicious. I've done this. I did this. The whole crew from uh, Mary Makes It Easy came over and I served them it cold and they didn't complain. So clearly it's tasty. <laughs> Amazing. That's a great idea. It's super Thank simple. You. Thanks so much, Leanne. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you. All right. This salmon is looking perfect. I'm going to pop that into my fridge for about 15 minutes. We are celebrating the launch of my third cookbook today with a cross-country cook-along. Look at all these beautiful faces I've got joining me in the kitchen. Hiya. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Today we are making, I'm gonna get to the page, my Mediterranean salmon with feta pickle. Mm. I'm very excited about this. It is super tasty. That salmon is marinating in the fridge. So now it's time to move on to perhaps the best two words that have been smushed together, feta and pickle. Very exciting. So the first thing I need is a quarter of a red onion. I'm using a red onion, I personally love them. If you wanted, you could go with a sweet onion here. You could also go with a shallot. That would be really nice and a little bit French. So we're going to like the French Riviera. If you want to take that fish somewhere there, that's great. But I'm just going to thinly slice this baby. I love a red onion because it's really nice and kind of peppery. It's one of my favorite raw onions. It took a lot of uh, convincing of my husband Aaron. He's not a raw onion fan when we met but we just celebrated our seventh anniversary and now he is. So that's a win in my books, definitely. All right, so that's nice and thinly sliced. And I'm gonna add that onion on into a bowl. If you're a real onion fan, you can feel free to go up to half of an onion, but you know, you do you. As I like to say, I'm not your mom. I'm just your friend, Mary, helping you make some food. It's gonna be great. Now into there, I'm also gonna add in a garlic clove. And classic me, I hate chopping garlic. I'm gonna use my rasp. Does everybody, I mean, I saw them earlier. Most people have a rasp going on in their kitchen. What a delight, yes, love it. So I'm just gonna rasp that straight on into the bowl. I had someone one time reach out to me and was like, why does no one use a garlic press anymore? Are they bad? Because I know a lot of like chefs often are like, ugh, a garlic press, we don't like those. But honestly, any way that you like to get your garlic into your food is good in my books. I personally just don't like chopping garlic because I don't like how it makes my cutting board smell. Anyone else with me on that? Garlic cutting board, not a thing, the worst, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that garlic is just into that bowl with that onion. 
And into there, I'm gonna add in the juice of that lemon from earlier, the one we, we zested. Now, if you used the juice in the marinade, you'd have to get another lemon, but I'm a real waste not want not lady. So this lemon that we zested, we're gonna use the juice in here. So just add that juice on top of those onions. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna start to kind of pickle those onions and garlic. Anytime I'm adding veg into a bowl, I wanna start, and I'm, and I'm working on pickling them, I wanna start with the kind of hardier veg, the ones that need a little bit of time to kind of pull back the spiciness. That was a good juicy lemon. This feels like a win. You know when you get a good lemon and you're like, yes, I didn't waste a dollar. What is it? Do we all, I feel, oh man, Leanne is ahead. We gotta catch up, this is amazing. <laughs> all right, that is looking beautiful. So into there to enhance that acidity, I'm also adding in two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Now, if you wanted to, you could also use uh, apple cider vinegar, you could use white vinegar, even red wine vinegar would be great. I would just steer clear of balsamic because it makes this pickle go brown. And that does not sound like a pickle that I want, which is rare. Now season that up with a little bit of salt and pepper as well. And then for a little bit of sweetness, I'm gonna add in about a teaspoon of honey. This brings just a nice kind of floral sweetness into the mix. Give that a little bit of a stir up. And already you can see that vinegar kind of changing color. It's getting a little bit pink. And that's from all that red onion. That looks beautiful. Now into there, I'm also gonna start adding in my veg. And this looks kind of similar to a Greek salad. So I have got a cup of cherry tomatoes here, and I'm just gonna have those babies and start adding those babies on in. And in addition to those, I'm also gonna chop up a cucumber. Oh man, okay, this is one thing that I do on my cooking show, and I'm doing it right now too. I love having cherry tomatoes, and I forget how long it takes anytime I'm writing a recipe. And then we just get to hang out for a little second <laughs> while I chop some cherry tomatoes. I know I see all those hacks on the internet with those like plates and bowls and everything that people do, but um, you can't take away chopping cherry tomatoes from me. Slice them in half, nice and juicy and delish. Perfect. All right. Now y'all keep going with those cherry tomatoes. I'm gonna move on to that cucumber. So I would chop those cherry tomatoes up nice and halved. And then I've got an English cucumber here. I'm gonna thinly slice mine. You can also dice it whatever way you want. And if you want it really nice and fine, you could also use uh, a vegetable peeler. That would be nice, really light, long strips of that pickle. Get that all chopped up. I love a cucumber. Also, anytime I find those like little baby ones, those are my all time favorite. They're so cute. They're like a baby carrot of the cucumber world. <laughs> Add those on in. And now for that feta. So I've got some feta here, about 100 grams, and I'm gonna cube this up. If you wanted, you could also crumble it, but for me, like a big old cube of feta, what a delight. And yes, to all those people who balk at the idea of fish and cheese, change the channel. <laughs> Cause like, salmon and feta, absolutely delicious. All right, chop that up. Add that on in, along with about half a cup of Kalamata olives for nice salty brininess, as well as a quarter cup of capers. And I love capers, they're super nice and delicious. Now I'm gonna give this a toss up and add a couple tablespoons of oil, but I feel like we've got a question from Sarah in Dartmouth, do we? Hi Mary, Hi. how's it going? Great Sarah, how are you? Oh my gosh, is that a cookie jar behind you? It is, Oh, yes. it's so cute, I love that. Oh my God, there's a couple. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How's the weather over in Dartmouth right now? You know what, it's gorgeous. Oh. It's been, you know, hurricanes and fires and everything, but today is beautiful, so I'm gonna take it. That's amazing, so what's your question? My question, well, first of all, congratulations on the new cookbook, because that's amazing. Oh, thank you and, so much. You know, to put out one, let alone three, is absolutely fabulous, and you're fabulous, so congratulations. Oh, you're fabulous. But, um, my question to you is, what was your favorite part of the process of doing the cookbook from beginning to end? Like, what, what did you love about doing it? Honestly, I think one of my favorite things is having my family involved. In this book, there are pictures of my best friend, there's pictures of my husband, my mom, but I also love when I'm writing a cookbook, I love thinking about what people at home are actually gonna wanna make. Not necessarily the fanciest thing in the world, but what you actually wanna get on the table at the end of a long day, just to help you, again, I'm just your bud, Mary. I just wanna help you get food on the table. Yeah. For my two-year-old, I will take that all oh, day long. <laughs> I can't even imagine how busy you are. Is she a good eater? Are they a good eater? She's, yeah, she's pretty good. Okay. She, um, you know, it's kind of 
a hit or miss every day is something different. So it's kind of nice because I get to try out different things, I guess. That is a glass half full situation and I love that look. That is amazing. I'm working on it, I'm yeah. working on it. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> thank you so, so much for the question. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.